Welcome back YouTube, you have Ahmed again from In-Depth Tech Reviews and in today's video I'm going to show you the most recent updates Google pushed to its own apps that's including Google Lens, YouTube Music, Google Assistant and more. And when you put all these updates together it feels like you got a new software update for your phone because they add extra functionalities and enhance the look of your apps. Especially if you are a Pixel user because most of the apps you have on your phone are Google apps. These updates will also be interesting for iOS and Android users because all these apps are available for download on the Google Play Store and the App Store. So now let's check what's new with the Google apps but before getting started let's make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified every time I post a new video so let's jump in The first update I'm going to show you here is related to Google Lens. Now if you have any image with text, even if it's written by hand like the one I have here, and the tap on the Google Lens icon, it will give you the chance to copy this text as usual, but what's new here is the copy to computer option. This option will allow you to push this text to your computer clipboard and paste it anywhere instantly. But to be able to use this feature, you need to have Google Chrome installed on your machine and also signed in with the same Gmail account that you are using on your phone. And once you tap on copy to computer and all the requirements are met, you will be able to see this machine in the list of available computers. And in this case, that will be my desktop machine. And when I tap on it, this text is now copied to my PC clipboard and I can paste it anywhere. I tried this feature many times and I have to tell you that it works instantly. Once you push the button, everything will be copied to your PC clipboard in less than a second. And it works really well with handwritten text as you see here in front of you. It detected all the words properly but it missed the word on and 90% of the time it gets everything right even with this bad handwriting you see in front of you right now. Another feature has been added to Google Lens it's called listen and when you select the text and the tap on it it will read the text for you as you see here it read the text i have written by hand and if you think about it those two features will make your life a lot easier in certain scenarios so imagine that you have a notebook that has a lot of text written by hand and you want to convert this to a word document you can simply take a picture and use Google Lens to push this text to your PC and to continue writing on your Microsoft Word or Google Docs application if you want. Not only this, but you can also listen to it. So imagine if somebody send you a screenshot from an article to read and you cannot read it because you are driving or you are doing your exercises, you can simply use Google Lens to read the text for you. And also it's gonna work with the handwritten text. And we saw something similar with Google Assistant when you ask it to read the articles for you, but it only works with web pages. But with the new Google Lens feature, now you got everything covered and you can even read the text in your images. And if you are an iOS user, you can do exactly the same thing, but you need to install the Google app to be able to get your hands on Google Lens. Next application I'm gonna show you here is YouTube Music. Just a couple of days ago, Google did a complete revamp to the YouTube Music application. And the first thing you will notice here is under the Explore tab. So as you see here, it got a complete redesign. And the first thing you get, those two buttons at the top. One is called new releases and one is called moods and genres. Here you have three main sections. One is called the new albums and singles, moods and genres, and the new music videos. And if you want to explore more, you can tap on new releases. And here you also have the albums and singles. Uh, and you can see all the new albums and singles from here. And also the music videos works exactly the same. And when you go to modes and genres, you can explore all the modes and genres. You have uh, three sections too. One is called For You, which is based on the previously added music to your library. Modes, where you can choose your music based on the mood. And all the other genres you can think of. Under library, there are also a couple of changes. When you go to library and then go to songs, now you see all the songs that you liked previously in addition to the songs that you added to your library. But in the previous version, when you go to the same place, you only see the songs that you liked. There is also a new section under library called subscriptions. And if you are subscribed to any artist, that should appear in this place. 
Other than this, it works exactly the same. One final change is in the now playing screen. And the first change you will notice here is in the song and video buttons. They now look like a toggle, but previously they were separated. And you get those two new tabs at the bottom. One is called up next and one is called lyrics. And also the shuffle and repeat buttons are now in the front, they are no longer hidden. And what I do like about this new redesign that everything you can do from the now playing screen now showing in the front. For example, in the previous version to get the repeat and shuffle buttons, you have to expand the up next first and then tap on the button you want. But now you can see them in the front. Also in the previous version to get the lyrics of the song, there was a small information icon right here and when you tap on it, it will show you the lyrics and that was not easy to figure out yourself. But now it's a pretty straightforward because you see the word lyrics at the bottom. The next update is related to Google Assistant on smart devices like smart speakers and smart displays. And in my case, that will be the Google Home Mini. And when I go to the Home app and then tap on my Google Home Mini and then tap on settings, now I will see a new option called Hey Google Sensitivity. And this option will give you the chance to set how sensitive the smart device to your magic word. So if you have the device very far away from you, you can make it very sensitive. Or if you have it close to you, you can decrease the sensitivity to avoid triggering your Google Assistant by mistake. Next, the digital well-being. So if you are a Pixel user and go to settings and then digital well-being, you will have a new option here called bedtime mode. This option was previously called wind down, but now it's called bedtime mode. And here you have three options, either based on a schedule while charging at bedtime or turn it off. And when you tap on based on a schedule here, you can set the schedule for your bedtime by tapping on the start and set the time and the end and also choose the days of the week. You can also customize the actions by tapping on customize and here you have two options, do not disturb and grayscale. You can have both of them active or you can choose only one. The other option you have here is called while charging at bedtime. And here you can choose a certain time and every day when you plug your phone to the charger within this time frame, it will automatically activate the actions you set for the bedtime mode. So it's not a major change, but it's a kind of rebranding with some visual tweaks. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are the most interesting changes for Google Apps in May 2020. So I hope you like my video and if you do please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos thank you for watching